Okay, so this is what the structure of the programme looks like. Okay, it has four levels. So the outcome is that you want to take, I have to apologise because you're right to say, there's no cursive writing on there. The computer doesn't support it. So they are in cursive on that thing, but they haven't come up in cursive, so bear with me. What the idea is to take those 26 letters and categorise them into a nice cognitive structure. So in a sense, this is a visual layered structure that we would expect to be occurring inside somebody's processing skills. So you start off with module one, which is, you'll see there's an introduction. We want children to learn the, the letter families. Well, in the think right, they become animal families. So the figurehead, each of these groups has an animal figurehead. And because we're British and it was organised here first, they are farm animals. They were chosen because most children, hopefully, <laughs> will have some living experience of a cow, a pig and a sheep. If I put a lion, a giraffe or whatever, I'm sure there's lots of your children that, who have seen a lion, a giraffe right up close, but not many. So we wanted to give them something that they could pull their own knowledge from. Because that's the whole point of cognitive linking. You want a degree of information that they already have that you then link it to. So basically we chose a cow, pig and a sheep. You'll see that the sheep has two subcategories that we split into two because you've got Rupert who's the white sheep and then Zach who's the grey sheep. So they do have names and the children learn this really quickly. They favour one over another. Typically that might be driven by the one that's in their name. So they do make strong associations with the animals. And then you see the rabbit is the spatial position group for obvious reasons. Rabbits live underground, they go looking for worms, they bounce around on the grass, so they do come up and they bounce around on the upper level, but then they do go down to the lower level. So they're a subcategory of all your descending letters. So what you then have is they learn a movement per animal. So each animal has its own movement and they link it to association. So most children will know a cow is taller than a pig. Now, many adults get really thrown by the fact that the cow stood up. <laughs> You'll be amazed how many questions I get from an adult's perspective. Now, children don't worry, Peppa Pig stands up. You know, Ben and Holly aren't real, but they do stand up. You do have an array of characters with children, so they don't question the fact that the cow stands up or the pig stands up. Parents and teachers do. Um, so you will see that each of the three have a starting shape. So they learn an association. And I'll go through this in a bit more detail. So all there are are three starting shapes. That's all you have to teach the children is three starting shapes. Those three starting shapes will convert into one of the 26 letters, or groups of the 26 letters. So there's none of this, or it's, each letter has a different starting shape. It's not. There are three. So you've already simplified the learning process significantly. So therefore, when you come to Module 2, Module 2 is what you do in nursery. It's pre-writing. So we have resources and activities for the children to learn, the animals, all the linking, all the association, they associate the starting shapes, so they're ripe and ready for when they go into reception. They've already got their cognitive structure, you can then layer in the letters as soon as you've covered your phonics. We'll, there'll be lots of questions about phonics, I imagine, hold on to them, because I will answer them. But uh, what you have is a pre-writing level. The pre-writing level can also be used effectively for children who are struggling. So it allows you to go through the process. Module three is learning to write. So learning to write is you then teach the letters in cognitive family groups, animal groups. And that then allows you to build in natural based repetition because they're practicing the same starting shape even though they're practicing different letters. So there's natural born um, repetition for the motor skills. Module four is learning to join them together. So we would expect children to have gone through at least module two and into mo no, module three and into module four by the beginning of year two. And in many, in some of the instances, that many of the children are joining in year one, if not before. 